haven't shown you the garden for a while because I was sick, but God is good. He took care of the garden when I couldn't. And I have a bunch of oriental radishes. The radishes are way too hard to eat, but look at all these radish. Look at all of these radish greens. And that's a red Russian kale peeking through. So I'm going to just pick some of these bad boys for dinner. Yes. <laughs> roots and berries oh look at the weight this is a radish guy i don't know if you can see see how big and overgrown it's gotten that root is but that root is what got this beautiful plant through the drought <laughs> you can see the radish there you see how tall the radish part of it is yeah you can't eat the radish when it's that big but i am a leaf eater not so much a root eater so it's fine with me oh look at this pretty leaf here yeah that's nice. Just boil those up with a little coconut oil. Oh yeah. These are radish greens. And I'm gonna go through and pick some of these. You see, this radish is as tall as me. It's tall as me, quite tall there. And all of these delicious greens are on them. At the Asian market, they don't, they sell these, these are Asian radish greens and um, I don't have to water this in Southern California because it has that nice radish root. There's what the root looks like. It's bitter, so stuff will eat it, but they don't love it like they would, say, some turnips or some beets or something like that. Look at how thick that stalk is. I'm trying to show it to you. Look at that thick stalk on it. That's why it doesn't eat water. <laughs> and Here's another water conservation plant here. This is kale. This is red Russian kale. And I just think in Russia, they probably have a ton more water than me. But I'm putting a little bit, you know, mixed greens. That's how you do it. You mix it up in the pot. And um, here's my, this is um, celery. But this is just celery for your stew pot. This is, um, red plume celery something like that uh, it's actually probably a mix because it's in my garden and it's from seed i think in california they're now selling this red um, seed um, celery for cooking and um, again no no extra water needed it does fine it grows from seed here and um, stays nice and healthy this is the celery for those of you see those shiny leaves full of vitamins and I just pick the leaves and use it like you would parsley so I don't really eat the root I eat these leaves I'm a leaf eater guy okay I got one chopped turnip those little leaves are turnip greens that were sprouting from the turnip I just chopped them up too and one chopped parsnip these are some greens I washed them as good as I could. I'm checking, you see that color on there? That is not dirt, so I did check <laughs> to make sure because the last thing you want is some dirty greens. I do eat the stems, but I took that part off just in case. But it is the color on the stems now. <clears throat> and now I'm just gonna finely chop these. Okay, now these are kale and radish. You can see that kale leaf there. And this is um, Asian radish. You can buy Asian radish leaves at the Asian store. Here's a, this is the size they sell. So that's the bigger ones. But when you get them out your own garden, you get all sizes. I'm gonna start by chopping the stems. Again, I'm chopping these very finely. The flavor is in the stems, but for some reason, Americans don't want to eat the stems. You know, the stems are just like, um, if you were eat carrots or turnips or something, 
the stems are like that. That's where the flavor is. If you eat the greens, just leaves. Um, just doesn't have the best flavor to me. I even add some roots to mine to give it even more flavor. So, right? <laughs> I added some ham. This is the Christmas ham. I bought it and chopped it up in small pieces to season the food with. And that's a piece of breakfast sausage that we had um, left over for breakfast that we're not gonna eat. So I'm using that to season my spring vegetables. I have the water only in the um, bottom third of the pot, which is where I'm going to now push the ham so that the ham bone actually and the piece of turkey sausage so that the spices and flavor in them add to the flavor of my spring greens. This Chinese radish plant and flower is a bee magnet. I don't know if you can see all the bees on this plant but it is a great plant for the bees and it is a great source of food for me. I eat these leaves here. You can buy them in the Asian markets. They're radish leaves. They are in the mustard greens family, so it's just like eating some form of mustard greens or turnip greens. Nice. You see the little bee? These are my radishes. This is how I have radish every year. I let that bad boy go to flower. And when it finally does. Mrs. B goes from flower to flower. Pollinating the plant, getting what she needs for her family. Isn't she cute? Oh, now this bee is a worker. She it, she has found all of these. Oh, now she's going to another form of radish. I think that's a radish. The flower looks a little more. See the little birdie in the bush? It's way up high. Look at that. She's gathering materials, looks like, to make a nest. There they are, eating my radishes. And that's why you gotta make enough to share. When you see in those books and they say, oh, all you need is one plant. Well, I eat all the radishes I want and so do they. I'm sorry that um, I'm having to do this through the window, but um, you know, they're wild animals. They're not gonna, if I were to go outside, they would fly away. They've gotten accustomed to me being at this distance. You see, I'm just going through, pecking out the seeds. Ah, we got busted. You see the way they peck into it and get the little seed out. He is such a cutie. Sorry I gotta show him to you through the screen. So cute. Look at that little red. Look at that little red spot on him. If anybody knows what these birds are, oh no, there's a fight. Now I have a garden full of these. But he's gonna come over here. And he's a different bird because he doesn't have a red spot, but he's bigger than the last bird. Okay. Oh. These have made it all winter without water. These are my lettuces. And the reason why you don't see more lettuce here is because they are not snail tolerant in order to grow 
in the ground, they have to grow fast enough to outdo the snails. And snails ate all the ones in the ground. So here it is, April 8th. And I am going to give them their first weekly water of the year and put some mulch on them. You know, because I want flowers next year. I want flowers and seeds this year from all these plants so that next year maybe I'll have enough lettuce where they can compete with the snails. Each of these plants can get about three times this big. Um, that's when I put the mulch on it because for the seeds I want to get the plants as large as possible. But for, you know, eating lettuce all winter long, I enjoyed having a whole bunch of compact plants to just come and chop a little bit. You know, cut a little corner and then make a so salad. Here's just a bunch of my rat tail radishes. Uh, the the white you see there is where the birds have eaten out the seed, and you see all the white there on the ground. But I have tons, as you can see. That's why they tell you one plant is more than enough for you, but they don't take into account the birds. If I had one plant instead of ten, since I'm only getting enough for one person. I wouldn't have any as you can see but because I have 10 plants all over the place everybody's eating good yeah trying to this is kind of strategic here that's my lettuce it's about to go to seed and um, in case you didn't know I don't plant any seed after the first year I let it go to seed and those birds they meander all over the place and God will decide where my radishes come up next year I want to show you look how big that plant is uh, these are Chinese radishes all of that is eaten but this is completely wood now you don't want to eat that but the leaves are still delicious so the, all the big leaves when the plant goes to flower it puts its energy into its seed pods which are also so good here's some right here but i'm gonna let those get a little bigger and nubby because then they taste like popcorn when i fry them oh, so good so good okay so that's rat tail radish. This is the same plant right here. But I'm telling you, once the birds discover your plant, you need 10 plants. Even if you're the only one, even if you're the only human that eats them. You know, I harvest these two or three times a week and have myself a snack. I think it's really good. It's good for your digestive system, guys. And if you're a woman, it regulates your hormones, gives you balance. It's good stuff. Okay. Go to fry. So our burgers are on this copper pot from TV on top of the NuVet Pit Titanium. Eddie, where I get this? Where do I get this um thing to cook on? This new wave pick titanium. They sell it at Bed Bath and Beyond. But, okay. But, those burgers smell good. But just get the new wave PC. Uh, what is it called? I can't. Think. New Wave PC. Okay. This is nice. This is what we're cooking our burgers on today. Deep dish square And you don't even have, once you put it on, you just leave it for eight minutes and your burgers are done. Yeah, you know, but that's trial and error. Yep, I'm set. All I want to know is, are you full? Not yet, Not but I... Not yet. Throw another two burgers on the ship. <laughs> oh, no, y'all didn't. Three-inch high, my...